having AGS update the beers criteria every year now has been just phenomenal. And the really nice thing about the beers criteria is they're really interdisciplinary. So nurses need to know about medications to avoid. Pharmacists, practicing physicians, physical therapists, social workers, um, really individuals working across the disciplines for the care of older adults. We are including aspirin for primary prevention of cardiovascular disease and some other medications with the anticoagulants. For example, the use of warfarin, which is a medicine which is commonly used, but in some cases might have a more challenging profile of benefits to advantages compared to some of the newer anticoagulant agents. There's a, a list of medications that we're going to remove from the criteria, not because they've suddenly become good, but uh, their utilization is so low that um, they kind of take up space. Many of them are not currently available in the U.S. because there's no manufacturer. We know that during the pandemic, the antipsychotic use has increased in older adults. And so we're looking at revising that language to really just be clearer about shared decision making, thinking about behavior as communication, avoiding antipsychotics in older adults, but making sure that it really is a last resort if they're at um, risk of harming themselves or others. Health professions um, are to use this as a guideline. And it's not supposed to be a dictum. So by that I mean it's sort of suggestions for medicines to be extra caution about. And the way I think about it is that whenever I'm thinking about prescribing a medicine that's on the list, it kind of makes me stop and take a double check and say, is this really what I want to do? Is there a safer or more effective alternative? It does not mean that these medicines are inappropriate in 100% of people. There are some people in whom these medications, they're perfectly reasonable. But there's a lot of people in whom they're really not. And so it really requires us to be extra vigilant when thinking about those medicines and, and trying to explore if there are safer and more effective alternatives. The AGS Beers criteria tends to be the foundation for many of the talks I give to students, residents, fellows, and faculty about how to provide rational prescribing to older adults. And it helps in clinical practice and in clinical care to help me to decide what medications I should consider not using in my patients. It's actually essential to what I do, whether it's education or teaching or research or just clinical care. Again, this should be shared decision-making. So it should be aligning um, the best medications with the goals of the older adult and the care partner. Beer's criteria is sort of one tool in my toolkit that I use to help think about what are the safest and most effective drugs I can use for my patients. It's not the only tool, but it's one important component of what I do.